Okay, I'm here in Logic today. I wanted to demonstrate an undocumented feature in a Native Instruments synthesizer called Prism. And there's really not a lot on the internet about it. I've, you know, there's a couple of short videos on Native Instruments about it, and there might be a couple others around, but so far I have not seen this. So starting here, I've got Logic open. And I've got my Loops browser open. And I'll just go with guitars. And I don't know if you know this, but a cool feature you can use in the browser is you can click on the tops of these columns to sort. And I want to sort by type of loop. And all of these green ones are MIDI. And all the ones down at the bottom are real instruments. So it's going to go down and looking for something I can use real quick. Okay, let's use this one. And the first thing I want to do is change this to something a little longer. So let's see, I think I have to go to double the length. All right. And I'm going to call up the Reactor plugin because Prism plays in Reactor. I have Micro Prism 2. You actually have to activate this every time by selecting your player, and then you can just double click on the player here. And the feature I wanted to show is actually hiding back here. If I click on this, the snapshots, I get all of the instruments here and I can switch from bass to bells and keys and mallets and things. So let's start with, uh, I don't know if you notice this, but there's a little snapshot morphing and random here. And if you turn down this disclosure triangle, you can load this up and change things. Okay, so I've got my MIDI track loaded up. Actually, I'm going to set a, a loop. And start it playing. Okay, let me turn the volume down. I need to be able to hear myself here. When I select an instrument here, this default section actually loads up with whatever I change this to. Okay, and so this is the first half of the morph. If I click on this one, I can pick another instrument. So I'm going to go over to the soundscapes and pick something long. Let's do Time Traveler. And now if I drag this across, I will start morphing the sound from one to the other. This is so cool. Uh, you can change the time of the morph by clicking and dragging up and down on this. Okay, that's not so pretty. And then you can randomize, actually. You can change how these switch from one to the other. And then you can randomize this sound 
to create new sounds. This is the percent of randomization. I believe these are slightly different. Random is randomize. There's no documentation on this, so I really don't know exactly what's happening. But if you do random merge, it's going to uh, merge the properties of vibes and whatever your second one, whatever your first instrument is, and whatever your second one is. And you have to be careful because when you randomize stuff, you can get things that are exceptionally loud. And sometimes you can get things that are just silent. That's kind of nice. Okay, let's try that. Anyway, there you go. That's the uh, undocumented feature. It's really pretty cool. I, I really enjoy it. It, w it showed up in Absinthe 5, I think. And so I recognized it right away when I saw it. But it's an interesting way to create entirely new instruments from all of the presets that they have available here. And it's really worth the experimentation. I hope this helps. Catch you on the next one.